Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Bizzat Sanjari. Welcome to Technical and Business Communication Lecture Series. In this lecture, we are going to uh, discuss about the basics of the CV, how to prepare a CV, what content you should put in the CV, and what not to put in the CV. First of all, uh, I want to discuss the difference between a CV and a resume. So we have heard a lot of things like uh, some people are not aware of the difference between a CV and a resume. So what it basically is the difference? Well, resume is a brief summary. It is a very, very brief summary, brief professional summary. By summary, I mean one's professional summary. Ideally, it is a one pager. It should not go beyond one page, maximum two pages in some conditions, but usually for fresh graduates, it should be a one pager, not more than that. As far as CV is concerned, CV is a more detailed professional summary of oneself. So it can be of two pages, three pages, four pages, depending upon the contents you have. But it should only have the relevant contents. So with the relevant contents, I mean, uh, you should only discuss about your professional life and nothing about your personal life. When you're making a CV, nobody is interested in your personal life. What people want to know is about your professional life, about your professional career, about your education, experience, if you have any publication, research, or any this kind of a thing, but nothing more than that. So in CV, you need to mention detailed information about your professional uh, life, education, you need to put detailed information about your education, where did you get it, how did you get it, what, did you, uh, what was your majors, etc. For uh, resume, just a brief one page, I just give them a flavor of what you did and that would be more than enough. So you should know the difference between a CV and a resume because sometimes somebody is asking just for a resume and we end up sending a CV. So it, uh, as, it say, as it is a common saying that first uh, impression is a last impression. So it stands in a lot of situations. And if we are sending a resume instead of, instead of a CV or vice versa, then uh, you can see where your first experience will be, what your first experience will be. For a fresh graduate, ideally I feel that uh, one should have the following information in the CV. Uh, not necessarily in the order that is given below, the order can change for some cases, for some headings out here, but it should contain these uh, information wherever it is applicable. For example, you should have your personal information, education, experience. If you have any publications, that'll be a plus. Skills, what skill set do you have? Then the research interest, if you have any research interest or if, if you're applying for the research job and the references, etc. So, but it all depends. The order and these headings, it depends on uh, uh, the type of job you're applying for or whether you are looking for a job or you're trying to secure a position in a research lab for a graduate student, something like that. So for the purpose of the CV is really important and the headings, they can change their order in that uh, according to their purpose. So the uh, most important part out here is that you need to address these of you need to know what to write in these headings and what not to write in these headings. So we'll learn uh, what should we write in these headings in the coming slides but uh, I'll say you do not need anything more than this these uh, information except one or two things for example if you have a test score a really good test score that means you have a GRE or an IELTS test or maybe get general or net general or something like that then you could put these kind of things here other than that normal tests they don't matter it doesn't matter and like they don't matter and you don't need to put these things in your CV so for the personal information, I just feel you just need to put four things out here. That is enough, more than enough, just four things. Name, location, phone number, and your email address. That's it. Uh, nothing more than that. So name, I mean, obviously somebody has to know you. Now. Like if, if you're applying for your job or something, you need to mention your name. And then the location, in location, you do not need to mention your entire address. Uh, the good thing is just, I mean, the good practice is just to mention the city and the country you are writing the, I mean, you uh, are located in. For example, Karachi, Pakistan, there'll be more than enough. You do not need to write any uh, detailed information like your address, for, uh, house number, street number. You do not need to write those kind of things. You need to give a, well, I mean, a phone number that is okay for you, that way you want to receive all those calls and an email address, a valid email address as well. So these are the four important things. You do not need anything else. You do not need your CNIC number. You do not need your passport number. Nobody wants to know whether you're married or not. I mean, these are not the cases. If they want it, they will give you a form. 
and you should fill out those things in that form but in CV you should not only mention these kind of things nothing more than this and the yeah, other important thing that you need to mention the personal information is that you need to attach your photo a uh, good photograph I mean a formal photograph works it should be on the right side extreme right or extreme left of your CV not in the middle or any part I mean some people put it on the right some people put it on the left I prefer to put it on the left but some people put it right it's okay right or left it's okay but it should be there should be one I mean your formal photograph not a selfie not a group photo not something that you cropped out from a really good photo a good prof a good professional photo that will be a formal professional photo that'll be more than good and it should show your entire face uh, for example you should not have any cap on or something like that I mean it should show your entire face that photo should show your entire face so this is the personal information you have five things name location phone number email address and your photograph nothing more than that if you address these things your personal information section will be more than good uh, then you have the other thing that you need to mention is education for me I prefer to start from the undergrad or maybe you should start from uh, your intermediate exams or intermediate or A levels whatever whichever is applicable to you but do not go beyond that do not go to metric or class one two three four something like that just start from either undergraduate or intermediate nothing below that so there here I've given you a sample of how to write the education in a CV you need to mention a degree title the university name or the school name whatever is valid for you the total time period you took for your study the major courses you studied and your final grade either it's a percentage grade CGPA whatever it is you should mention that as well for example I've given here uh, I mean I've just uh, below we have an example for uh, sample education uh, somebody's CV where, who has done bachelor's in electrical engineering from any university in 2007 to 2010, um, to 2010 and then the CGPA was 3.2 then he has mentioned his uh, major courses as well power distribution power transmission and power system analysis so you need to mention three to four relevant courses do not mention entire course and do not mention irrelevant courses if you're applying for a job in electronics then you should mention the courses that are related to electronics engineering if you meant if you're trying to apply for a job in telecommunication sector go for communication system data communications all these kind of things do not mention hardcore electrical subject things and if you are applying for a job in electrical engineering do not need to mention Islamia, Pakistan studies or I studied technical and business communication or power or engineering economics or these kind of things no you need to mention your major courses and your major courses are related to your major whether it's electrical engineering you need to mention the course of electrical engineering electronics then go for the electronic side if you want to mention computers engineering then you have to be of the computer uh, the courses have to be of the computer engineering etc and mentioning three to four courses more than enough you do not need to describe about them about these courses because these courses I mean by the name they describe themselves in power distribution somebody would have studied something called power distribution and how it is utilized in power transmission it's simple somebody can know like everybody can know like it's about the, uh, the power transmission system that is in place in the world and the power system analysis you look work around the load flow analysis and everything so you do not need to explain these courses just uh, mentioning these courses is more than enough and only mention three to four courses you do not need to list down 10 or 12 courses three to four courses that you are confident that if somebody asks any question to you uh, regarding those uh, those courses you will be able to give answers try to mention those courses but that though that should be relevant those should be relevant to the job you're applying to or scholarship you're applying to uh, then in education you also need to mention your final year project uh, for example here the example is electricity market for a small small neighborhood and then you need to explain the project in no more than three sentences I mean if you want to explain it it's good if you do not want to explain it it's okay but explaining is good but you should try to have concise small sentences and not more than three I'll say two or three pointers there will be more than enough just try to explain it in two to three lines that's more than enough and do not make it in paragraphs try to uh, try to explain it in bullets because paragraphs in CV they don't look good bullets they look nice uh, they give a formal way and uh, but if, when I'm trying to read bullets I mean it's okay it looks neat rather than having paragraphs in a CV then you can also explain your semester projects but I'll say not more than three three two three projects are more than enough explain them if you want but don't explain if you're writing in a resume don't explain them or don't even mention them but if you're writing a CV 
you should uh, mention some projects and then try to explain them in one or two lines. But only mention the relevant projects. Do not say I prepared a power supply. No, I mean try to, if you are targeting a place in, so, for example, a job in some company that works with embedded systems and then you have done some semester project, semester projects that are related to embedded systems, then try to mention those projects. Other than that, just skip this part. Then we move on towards the experience part and then you only need to mention the relevant experience because you are applying for your first ever job. So maybe the only experience you guys would have will be of internship only. So try to mention the experience, the internship experience in a positive way. Uh, that is that you need to uh, write some good duties that are related to the job, not the duties that I was asked to do some photo states or I was asked to give some presentations or like that. Try to focus on the job you're applying to and try to be relevant to that job and the duties that you want to apply to. For example, I've just given here one example here. For example, somebody did an internship in smart grid department in Karachi Electric from June 2011 to July 2011. Uh, so oh, this was the internship date. Like you have to mention internship. When did you uh, did the internship? Where did you do the internship? And when the uh, post you had so in the experience wanted to show it or what did you, what do you need to mention is the post you had so if you had an intern you did an internship so you can write I was an intern in here or did I just did, uh, did an internship here and then the duration the duration uh, one month two month whatever it is you should mention that as well and it should be in the same same format as you have mentioned your education like if you have mentioned your education in month and then here Go for that. If you mentioned your education as year and then month, go for that. It should be in the same format. The format, you should not change the format at all. Then uh, the company name and where the company is located, location, these are also important. Then you can write some relevant duties. If you had some nice duties, you shouldn't try to mention them. For example, here I've mentioned load calculations for new customers. It is related to uh, like electrical engineering. That's why I've mentioned it here. If there was something like I did was not related to electrical engineering, then I mean the, the internship, uh, then the purpose of internship dies. So you do not need to mention those kind of a thing that do not aid your application. Try to write the duties that help you in uh, help your application rather than being a burden on it. You should mention the publications that you have done. If you have any publication, it will be an advantage in your CV. I mean, it helps to uh, enhance your CV. It helps uh, in attracting the attention of uh, the reviewer of the CV to, um, I mean, it, it looks good. So try to mention as many publications as you can, but tr only the one that have been published or are in process of publication. Do not write something that you are doing or you're planning to do. That is not good. And then you try to, you should try to uh, follow the known referencing format for this thing. So if you know something, some format that is really good for referencing and it is known worldwide and only follow that format or else go on Google, just type on Google, what are the referencing formats that you can use for uh, writing citations and something like that. And then you can mention your publications in that format. For example, in this uh, example, I've just written one of my publication. Uh, first, we have written the name of the authors and what the publication title is, where it is published, what are the page numbers, which year it was published and whether it has any impact factor or not. So in this one sentence or just like one public one reference, I have given every information related to this publication and somebody if it go he go he or she goes and try to search this publication can search this publication really easily. So you have to make a public like a CV easier to easier to understand rather to make it harder to understand. So this is one of the important thing and try to mention as many publications as you can because you never know which one grabs the attention of the person who's reading the CV and helps you in achieving the purpose of the CV. Then you need to mention your skills. And then again, you should mention your skills in the field uh, like you are of your field. That will be more than important for you. Like for example, if uh, somebody has some hands-on experience or hands-on skill, for example, somebody is really good with PLCs. He can write that, that I know how to repair a PLC or how to work on a PLC. That's a pretty good experience skill. But do not write my uh, wrong skills, for example, I am good at driving. Like Nobody wants to know whether you're good at driving, good at driving or not. You should try to mention the skills that are relevant to the job. 
and then another thing is the MS Office is nowadays pretty compulsory like everybody knows computer and everybody is dependent on the computers so if you skip out MS Office it's okay because it's kind of mand it's kind of a mandatory thing now that everybody should know MS Office then you also need to mention your programming I mean what skills can you do I'll say for the software side you should tell them what softwares do you know for example Omnet, MATLAB or you can say Proteus or Multisim or something like that or NS2, NS3 and then you also need to mention some programming languages you are comfortable with you know I mean you are not telling about the languages you just know about you are comfortable right try to write the languages that you are comfortable in for example C, C++, Python all these kind of a thing uh, moreover you can also write if you know some good uh, if you know more than one language you can write here about that here as well you speak more than one language that will be pretty good for example if you know English and then you know Korean or German or French write those things if you are applying for example if you are applying to Germany and you know German then it is an added advantage and you should mention this thing in skills if you are applying to Korea and you know Korean then it's a pretty pretty good thing that you should mention uh, that you know that you're familiar with Korean and you know Korean you can speak Korean or write Korean or something like that then you should mention that in the skills section as well the next topic of the next heading of CV are the research interests. So it comes, I mean, it it is a thing that should not be in every CV. I mean, if you're applying for a post in a research lab or you're applying, or you're applying for a position as a graduate student, then you need to mention, then you need to mention your research interests. Other than that, if you are trying applying for a field job, or a training engineer job that you do not need to mention uh, the, your research interest. Then again, try to mention two, three, four research interests, uh, th four topics of your interest that you are planning to do research on or you're currently conducting research on. And uh, they should be technical topics, obviously, and the ones that you have some knowledge about. I mean, do not put the topics that uh, you cannot answer. So that is the first thing. Do not put any topic that you cannot answer in these uh, question. I mean, in uh, in these uh, among these topics, uh, there shouldn't be any topic that you are not able to answer if some question is asked related to that topic. So always mention related topics that you are conducting research on. And again, if you are applying for a graduate position, uh, student position, or for a research lab try to mention the topics that are relevant to their interest as well to the lab you're applying to or the company you're applying to whether the company does research on those things or the lab is doing research on those topics or not if they're not relevant do not mention those topics because then it can go as a negative point for your cv then comes the point of references we should mention references two or three references at the end of a cv i mean a lot of people end up uh, mentioning uh, writing a sentence to be furnished upon request. I mean, it's an idiotic sentence. We should not write the sentence at the end of a CV. It can destroy a pretty good CV. So you should always give two to three references, a maximum of three references, not more than that. Uh, three references, professional references are good enough. You need to give the references that are professional. That is not your friends, not your family members, not somebody you just know. I mean, uh, out of the references, at least two should, if you're mentioning three references, at least two should be from your university you had done your undergrad or master's from, and one should be from the company you had done internship or job. Or if you have, I mean, if you go up the cycle, the more and more ref references should be from your previous jobs then. And for the reference, you should provide your, the name of the reference, the designation, the company, the email ID of the reference, and the contact number of the reference, and that's all. Uh, you do not need to mention anything else apart from this. Uh, to make the CV and resume, to make good CVs and resume, I prefer two websites. Uh, they have internationally recognized CV and resume patterns. NovaResume.com, it's a pretty good website to uh, prepare a CV or resume. And Europass.com is one of the best websites for a CV. I mean, their format is internationally recognized, especially in Europe. Their format I mean, if you try to follow the format, it will always lead you to good results. This is a small exercise. This is a small exercise for you guys. Try to complete it and email me and we'll discuss it in the question and answer session.